What's up everyone, welcome to LWT Trading. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to set up your charting, how to set up indicators on them very charts, and how to put in orders. Orders including market orders, limit orders, range orders, and stop losses. If you are new here at LWT, we go live every single pre-market talking about what stocks we're watching, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notifications, save yourself some time, punch that like button, and drop a comment in the section below with where you're from. I'd love to know where you're viewing from, especially if you're a new trader. Throughout the video, if if you've got any questions, press pause, drop them also in the section below. I reply to every single comment. We have got a lot more videos on Trade Zero coming soon, so if you've got anything you want reviewed, drop them below. Let's get into the video. This is my Trade Zero Pro platform setup. Uh, currently, the V3 version went live and it's no longer better, so this is one of the reasons why I'm actually doing this video right now. What I'm going to do is go through the basics with you. Then I'm going to switch to a paper trading account, make a trade, show you how to buy, sell, show you how to make a free trade, and then we'll go from there and see how it works out. So starting top left, which is, if you can see my mouse, this area here, this is the level two window. Um, this is where you put in your orders. Um, quantity is very simple. This is where you place in your orders. The next one is a time and sales. And below, obviously, is the charting, which you can zoom in and out of. I've obviously got two of them here, so I can watch two stocks and level two at once. In fact, actually, I usually have three uh, on a side screen, and the one on the side screen is where I usually place my orders. Up here, my account number is going to be blanked out. If you click close positions, uh, you will be able to see your trades that you took today uh, with the close positions, your order history, including the ones you've canceled and your account details here. And again, this is all gonna be blanked out, but you can see basically what's there. And obviously the open positions is the main one you're gonna be looking at. Uh, if you go to the, this top bit here, this is gonna be your pending orders, orders. So for example, if you wanna put a bid in at a certain price, that'll be there pending, waiting to be taken out. And once it's taken out, it'll be showing here in the current open positions, which again, I'll show you later. Uh, down here, I have a watch list. To be honest, these are just the uh, the sort of main tickers I tend to watch just to, just to get a feel for how the whole market is actually performing. And down here is recent news. The reason I have this is just if, for example, uh, in current news, uh, you might be watching this in a year's time. In current news, there is a tr uh, China trade war with the US. So if a trade deal gets signed, the markets are probably going to rally. And if I see the SPY jump up to 2% plus uh, on the day all of a sudden and that comes in this news. It just gives you a bit of comfort of mind. That's the reason why So what you might have noticed is I've just actually switched to the paper trading account and I've closed down these windows here Just by clicking on the X and um, we're gonna go through some of the basic options um, first thing is is if you click the uh, Top left circle there the trade zero logo You can see some of the hotkeys and you know some of the other crazy stuff there to be honest There's not much there the bottom uh, row here is if you look at the pictures and you click main, you can actually coincide what they are. They're like a little shortcut trade zero give you. For example, these glasses that I'm hovering over now, if you click there, you can see the same glasses. It actually means watch list. And if we click on that, it'll open a watch list column. What we're going to do is we're going to open a level two. We're going to open a time and sales, and then we're going to open a pro charts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just make these a little bit more appealing to the eyes by dragging and dropping them down. While I'm doing this, I just want to reiterate, if you haven't done so already, please do hit that like button and drop a comment below with where you're from in the world. I'd love to know where people are from, where they're watching. And of course, the more comments, the better. If you're enjoying this content, it'll help us rank higher. So level two, let's quickly just go through this. If we type in, let's say, Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, you will see all of this information come up. So what you can see here in this level two window is the left is the bid and the right hand side the ask. As you can see this NS here, usually that would just be an S for Apple because there is shorts available, but this is a paper trading account. So I have no idea why, but I'm pretty sure we can still short even on a paper trading account. The next two worth of note are the two green figures here. They can be green or red. That is how much the stock is up or down and how much percentage. And the far right there is how many shares the stock has traded since the pre-market. So Apple has currently traded 13.7 million. 
The right hand column here gives you a bit of a uh, time and sales data. As you can see, it's not so big. You can make that a bit bigger. Coming down to the left is if you want to put an order in, the, how many shares you want to buy. So for example, 500 shares. And you've got whether you want to put a limit, a market, a stop loss, or a range order. We'll come into them in a bit. Roots typically will have smart on there, which is Trade Zero's favorite route. And they do all the, the labor work for you. But as I said, this is a paper trading account, so it currently shows SIM. Uh, time in force. I've never played with this. I always just leave it day. And then the price you want to buy the stock at. Of course, if you click market order, then that will just stay blank because you're throwing it out for somebody else to pick it for you. But that is obviously all editable yourself. You probably noticed that when we uploaded Apple, these two charting softwares didn't actually link. So what we need to do is we need to right click on all three of them and click linked to group. I'm going to click uh, group A. I'm going to click link window and OK. Then I'm going to right click on the others and just repeat the process. One thing you might notice is when I'm right clicking on the chart here, there is no uh, option to link to group. What you've actually got to do is you've got to, next to this settings bar, you've got this little arrow and you've got to click which um, group you want to link it to. So obviously I clicked A and they're all now linked. And what that means is basically if we pick a different ticker, the charts when level two and time and sales will all coincide with that. You can then obviously link more. So for example, if we wanted to look at a different time frame, and you know, if we click say Twitter, then all of them charts will change too. And this is helpful if you want to look at something on a different time frame. Um, but for me personally, I do prefer the other way. So level two time and sales, obviously the price, the size, you can make this as big as you want. It's all fully customizable. And then coming down to this, I'm just going to make this again a bit more and aesthetically pleasing. So things to know on the uh, time and sales is not really too much. You can't do that much. You can go down, obviously, since you uh, put in the ticker and you can go back and see, you know, previous time and sales, but that's pretty much uh, it. Let's look a little bit more into the charting. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that full screen for us. Um, we can obviously use the scrolling on our mouse to zoom in and out. You've got all your different uh, timings. You can draw stuff if you wish with horizontal lines for uh, resistance areas. Um, I don't know if you can free draw. Actually, that's something that we could probably ask for them to add. Indicators, you can add whichever ones you want. So if you wanted to add something like, uh, for instance, MACD, you can just uh, hover over and click it, and it will then appear uh, on the chart, for example, at the bottom here, you can see. Another thing that's worth of note is the all sessions button, which will include pre-market or not. Um, so usually you want to have this ticked and you can see the pre-market there uh, just on the left hand side of the screen. And if we turn off all sessions, you'll see that it's not there at all. Um, so yeah, for me, if you do trade pre-market or you want pre-market, make sure that's clicked. Show all trades. Uh, this is something that I'll turn on for them both. And this is just to show your entries and exits. So let's go ahead and make a trade. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do a test order. I'm gonna throw 100 shares of Facebook to a market order so we can just see what happens. Um, first thing is, typed in 100, typed in market, click buy, and you can see there, it briefly went into the uh, column here, and then it got executed. So currently in this box, if we make it a bit bigger, you can see I'm holding 100 shares of Facebook long with an average price of 16316. That's the current market value, the percentage day change, blah, 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 blah. How much is realized if I want to partially sell on this trade and the gain and loss. Now with these, you can actually just move them to wherever you wish uh, to make it more relevant for you if you wish. So if we make this back a bit more cleaner, we've now been in this trade for a couple of seconds now and we're down 0.02. And I don't like the way that's looking. So what I'm going to actually do is now sell that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a limit order. Okay. So Facebook uh, is currently trading. Let's zoom right in here. At 63 pretty much. But because my actual order is at 16, 16 I don't want to sell this for a loss. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to throw in an order uh, to sell this, a limit order. I don't want to make a loss in this trade, although it's looking likely. I'm going to throw in a price of 163.25 to see if we can make some profit. Okay. Now, two things you can notice. First thing is, is my order has gone here and it's going to sit here until Facebook gets to that level so that I can get traded out. And that's hopefully the plan. 
And you can see on my charting, this is where it tells me I bought the shares. You can see this little arrow right there. Um, that's my entry. And then you can see my sell limit has also come on. Now, if you don't like the way that is and it's a bit distracting, you just unclick show trades and it's there for you. Now let's see if Facebook gets a little push and our order gets filled. Okay, so I don't like the way this trade is going, as you can see, we're losing. So I'm gonna put a limit order in now uh, again, and I'm gonna put in 163.08. Let's see if we get took out. I'm gonna click sell. And let's see, and you see there, I got took out pretty much instantly into that little push. And we ended the day, if we go back and look here, um, I've took an $8 loss there on that trade. Happy I'm paper trading this one for you. Now there is other things. There is stop limits, uh, stop markets, and range orders. I'm gonna go through them just quickly now. A stop market is basically if this price is breached, it only lets you fill in this one box, then it'll throw a market order out for you. Um, let's see that in action right now. So again, I've just threw in a market order to get filled 100 shares and I'm going to throw out a stop market uh, limit here. So let's say 162.95. So I'm going to throw that out there now. Now if 162.95 gets filled as it just did there, you can see as soon as one print went off at that level, it threw my market order out and it just took me out of that, that long position for, an, for another loss. Um, so that's a good example of just, you know, if you want to make sure you get out of a trade, no matter what, it's a good thing for discipline, especially new traders. If you're new to the game, then it's a very good thing uh, to be using, in my opinion. Just be wary on a stock that's trading very light volume. You could be on a market order selling much lower than the price if the volume's pretty low. Stop limit is very similar. You can't really do them on the paper trading account, unfortunately. But the stop price is at what price does it trigger and the price you want to get out is the actual price. So for example, I, if the stock was very thin, I could put 163, sorry, 162.85 and that'd give me 10 cent leeway. So I'd throw my sell order in 10 cents below the, uh, the price and I should for sure get filled in that case. A range order is quite a clever one. Again, I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to buy... 100 shares of app, uh, Facebook again, I'm gonna throw in a range order and I wanna sell this at 163 or I wanna sell this at a market at 162 point, let's say six, okay? And if I click sell, you can see two orders come in now. So what happens here is it basically gives you a stop market. So whichever one of these prices trigger first, it will take me out of the trade. This type of thing is very good if you have a price target goal in mind and you also have a risk and you, you know, you've got, you know, someone coming or you can't sit and watch your ticker all day, then it's a very good thing to have in place in my opinion. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel this here and I'm going to tighten my range a little bit. So we're not watching it all day. One, six, two, oh, Jesus. 162.6. I'm going to lower my profit target to 162.7. Okay seven nine okay and i'm gonna click sell and then again whichever one gets triggered first that will be the defining factor and the reason i've done that is the paper trading software is actually delayed by about 10 to 15 minutes so i've actually got i don't you can see you can't see it here but i've actually got a facebook live chart up here so if we if i didn't change that right now you'd be sat through 15 minutes of consolidation <laughs> so I actually should know that the 79 should trigger very soon. And there it did. And what you see there is it didn't get filled straight away. Um, again, that is down to the fact that a lot of shares are trading and it's a paper account. So that's a wrap. If you are new and you're still watching, please do let me know you've watched the full video. If you've got any questions you want me to answer, drop them also below. And make sure you've hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell, and please do drop me that like. See you guys very soon. Take care. Goodbye. Oh, 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 oh.